Wow. Seems like 41 years ago, I sat in the same seats you're sitting in. You know, I travel across the country. I see big government facilities like NASA, the FBI, the Pentagon, who uses products we make here in La Trobe with students who graduated from La Trobe. It really gives me great pride, but I never get too nervous when I'm visiting these places. Not much. Uh, one time at uh, the Pentagon, I was escorted in blindfolded with an escort tied to my hand, and I thought, wow, this is pretty unusual. <laughs> and we were going into a site that was top security, so we had to, we, I had to, to not see anything as I was going in. Now, I don't get nervous. But I have to take that back. I did get a little nervous because when I had to go to the restroom, he said, uh, I'll be with you. And I said, nope, oh, I just lost my urge to do that. <laughs> you know, I visit corporations like Microsoft, you know, $50 billion company, millions of PCs, millions and millions of PCs. I, I see places like CBS Sports, who we make products for them. They use it on the NFL football set made by students who graduated from La Trobe. And that's really a great honor uh, to live in a hometown like this and make such sophisticated things. And I don't get too nervous there either. In fact, I was up, they asked me to be up at their grand opening of the NFL set with Terry Bradshaw and the whole group of uh, the football guys on our grand opening. And so I went with them. And I was there to make sure our system would work. It was a computer controlled system and it was a time when computers just came out and they didn't trust computers. They had no computers in the whole CBS studios. Can you imagine that? And so, right a minute before the session was to start, the computers went down. And I thought, oh my goodness sakes. But I wasn't nervous. 30 seconds later, it was back up and we were ready to roll. I visit places like schools, United States Military Academy, United States Naval Academy. I speak to professors, teachers, all over the country, and I never get nervous. But tonight, and tonight, I'm a little nervous. Because tonight, I speak to my most important audience. I speak to graduates, just like I was long ago, with hopes and dreams and challenges ahead of them, with questions in their mind of, am I doing the right thing? Am I going to the right school? Will I be good enough there? Will college be the same as high school or will it be a lot harder? And if you're going on to the job, well, did I pick the right job? Will I be good enough? Will I be able to make them enough money? Same questions I had. And you know, your teachers had the same questions too when they were sitting where you are. And it gives me great pride to be able to speak to you today. So Dr. Stavisky, Board of Directors, parents, friends, and the graduates. It's a great honor to be here this evening. You know, several years ago, there was a study done on what makes people work their entire life. What drives people? And they found three things that people will strive for their entire life. I thought there would be hundreds of things, but there's only three things. They're very general. You never think about these three things because we just accept them. The three things they found, the first was freedom. Freedom. The freedom to believe what we want. Freedom to say what we want. And the freedom to become what we want. And to have our children someday become what they want. This is America. It's the only land that millions of people are coming to. Did anyone ever hear in the news of the millions of Americans that are trying to get across the borders to get into Mexico? No. You hear of the millions and millions of illegal immigrants coming to this country. This is America, where dreams are made. You know, it was funny that someone asked me, what made, what made me successful? And you know, that's a hard question as I look back, because it was easy. It was really easy. And I think I have 56 patents. When I sat where you are, I would never have dreamed that I would create products that have 56 patent claims. It's simple in America. You know where it's hard? It's hard in Iraq. 
It's hard in Mexico. It's hard in Africa, in the third world countries. But in America, it's easy. The second thing they discovered that people will strive for their entire life is peace. Who would think that? Who's striving for peace? We already have it. But we want peace in the world. We want peace in our home. We want to know that we have a family that's peaceful and we're not worried about terrorism. We want peace at school, at work. Peace from the bullies that'll take away our pride and our passion. Peace and freedom. The third thing, the most important thing, I believe, and you'll find it as you share these memories with your family, love. People will strive their entire life for it. Everyone desires it. They will even go and die for it, the ability to love. Love of our country. It's the greatest country in the history of civilization. In 200 short years, we have created what all nations look up to. And it's because we have school systems like La Trobe producing people who want to go out and make a difference. And not just the students that are going on to college, but the students that are going to be our builders someday. All of us want to live in a home, and our builders who will, who will build cathedrals and school buildings, and auto mechanics that will service our cars and build our cars. We all play an important part in America that no other country has. So we're privileged and we should be grateful for all those people who have come before us. Can you imagine the millions of people you don't know who died and fought battles so we can sit here and come to graduation because today is graduation day. It's Independence Day. Independence Day. They say there's five events in our life that change us. It's not the events that necessarily change us, but it's the decisions we make when faced with those events. Now, one might think there's thousands of things that go on to, be, to make us who we are right now, but if you look back over your career after I leave here today and look at the five decisions you made that made you who you are right now, that's only five. Now, at Independence Day, you're going to be making more of those decisions on your own. Prior to today, your teachers, your parents, a grandparent may have helped you along the way with those decisions. But today, you will be making many of your decisions on your own and through the help of mentors. My story goes back, oh, 40 years ago when I graduated from here, 41 years really. I grew up in a place about three miles from here. It wasn't even called a town. In fact, they called them patches. Probably some of you out there live in these patches that I used to live in. Didn't have a name. In fact, the street I lived on, top of the hill, had no name. There was no street name. The house I lived in had no number. So you might think I came from nowhere. We lived in a home with two bedrooms. There were nine people in our family. There was no running water in our home. And one might say, I bet you you were smart though, and that's why you were able to succeed. I was just an average student, a C student. I got a B every once in a while, or an A. But this is because you can live in America. See, knowledge doesn't stop just because you don't go to school any longer. Knowledge on the job and learning and being passionate about your job are some of the most important things that you'll need going forward. I'm going to give you three tricks and tips before I leave here. How many in here want to grow up and be successful? Let's say in the next four years. How many of the graduates? Can I see your hands? How many want to be successful? You know, how about anybody want to be unsuccessful in the next four years? Anybody? How about those parents? Anybody out there want their children to be unsuccessful? Let me see some hands. There's one way back in the back over there. 
I've never seen it myself. I, I travel all over the country. No one wants to be unsuccessful. But guess what? When you become successful, someday you're going to leave the world, and that goes with you. But what I would suggest tonight is to become significant. What's significant mean? Becoming significant means you will help others become successful. Can you imagine that? There's a rule called the golden rule. It's just about in every religious book in the world. Do unto others what you'd have others do unto you. Can you imagine if you help others succeed and they're helping you succeed? Can you imagine the world and how difference we'd make? So become significant. I'm going to give you three tips at the end of my program here that will make and guarantee everyone to be successful. Does that sound easy enough? Three things, not a thousand. Everyone thinks sitting out there, there has hundreds of things we have to do to become successful. There's going to be three things that we're going to tell you about. You ready for them? First, be significant. Help other people become successful, and you will in turn become successful. For instance, the next job you get, some of you graduates are ready to start working. Uh, one, of the, one of the teachers was telling me that some have a job already, some are going to be nurses, some already have building trade jobs, and some are going on to college to get more knowledge. Can you imagine if you went to your work with passion, helping your employer become successful? What a different attitude. After all, he's helping you by giving you money, paying you. Can you imagine if you had the passion to work for your employer, making them successful, the kind of reputation you would get? Be significant. Help other people succeed first, and you too will succeed. The next one is be prepared. Now, what do I mean by prepared? Let me tell you a story. There was a group of La Trobe High School students congregating in the back uh, before our session here, and they were talking about the struggles that they feel. They're uncertain about going to college and whether they're going to make the grade that they made here. Uncertain what major. They're not sure what major to declare. They may want to change it. And some of the students going on to work were wondering, is this the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? And so they said, hey, there's this guy coming, this wizard coming to speak to us tonight. He graduated from here 30, 41 years ago. Maybe he knows the answer to this struggle that we've had, that we're having. So let's go talk to the wizard, the old, old, old wizard. Well, he's not that old. And so the wizard said to him, tell me your problems, and the students told him about the struggles we just talked about. And the wizard said, I heard a story about two farmers. They both needed rain desperately, very desperately for their fields. So both went out and prayed for rain. But only one went out and prepared his field to receive the rain. Which one do you think received the rain when it came. The students said, well, of course, that's a simple one. The one who prepared his field for the rain, to receive the rain. Well, the students all said together, that was not hard. Well, the wizard looked at them and said, which one are you? God will send the rain when he's ready. He will send the rain when you are ready. So be prepared. And what I mean by this is sometimes we go wrong and we, we think, well, let's just wait and see what happens. When you're at work, you just say, I'll wait until they tell me something to do. But be prepared. Know everything about your job, even if it's job starting at McDonald's. Be prepared. Learn as much as you can about your job. And when you're at school, going to college, don't worry just about the grades you're making. Are you going to college to get grades? You're going to college to 
become something. If you're going to become a chemist, learn about being a chemist. And there's people that are already chemists. Learn from them. Get prepared. See, because when the time comes and the rain comes, you'll be ready to take any opportunity that comes near you. And lastly, be thankful. Many people have come before you. We study history of the millions of people who died for our country. But there's people every day that touch your life. A grandparent, an uncle, an aunt, some of the friends that are in this facility this evening. They treat you as if they're, you're their own. They've guided you, they've watched you. A parent who gave up everything to help you. 18 years ago, your parent brought you home from the hospital and looked you in the eye and said, I want the best for you. We live in America. I want you to be the best that you can be. We have a lot of people that have helped you get here today, and teachers, teachers who empowered you, inspired you, and brought you along, and put up with your impatience. We don't get to where we are alone. I don't get to stand here speaking to you by myself. There was hundreds and hundreds of people in my life that gave me the right message at the right time. And that's a part of being thankful. And I promise you, if you go out to be significant, help others succeed, and be prepared, always be learning. It's not only what we learn in the book, but always be the best at what you do. Be passionate. I remember I had a job on construction when I was going through school. And my big job was crawling through a pipe along the superhighways. You know the pipes that you'll see periodically on the superhighway that drain the water? My job was to crawl through the pipe and put tar on the inside of the pipe. And I would crawl there for hours on end, miles and miles, putting that on. And you know what? They thought I was the best pipe crawler in the whole world. <laughs> they promoted me that summer and said, wow, if he could do that that well, I bet you he can do something else better. See, people, look, they, people want people who are passionate about what they do, excited about what they do, and they then want to be significant by helping you succeed. But most of all, please be thankful. Be grateful to the people who help you. So when you leave here this evening, you're going to go back these aisles. You're going to see your parents. Thank them, because they helped you. They put you here. They loved you. They put that you first. They wanted to make you successful, and in turn, they became significant. And significant will last forever and ever. And your teachers, don't forget to say something to them when you leave. They made themselves significant by attempting to help you succeed. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. <laughs>